crucial. Man, a restaurant with such terrific chow turned out to be a mere front for some criminal scheme. Look at it this way, Robin. That hundred dollar cover charge is pretty stiff. Penguin's terrific chow is hardly within the budget of the average worker. Gosh, yes, you're right, Batman. All the needy people in the world, the hungry children. Good thinking, Robin. Oh, it's you, Batman. Gave me quite a start. Yes, citizen, you may return to your harpsichord. We're on official business. Oh. <laughs> Let's go, y'all. Oh, what's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. I'm Lorenzo. This is my comic son, Marcus, a.k.a. Circumstances. And every week we do this live stream where we talk about our comics. We look forward to stuff next week. And I even throw in a couple of reviews just for the hell of it. And it's all brought to you by my little store, the Alternative City Shop. I not only love reading indie comics, but I've self-published several indie comics of my own. You can find them on my Alternative City Shop, which has a link below this video. There, you'll find, along with my comics, t-shirts, stickers, and mystery boxes, you'll find pens and magnets that I call CBOs, or comic book originals, which are buttons, magnets, and pocket mirrors that I make from superhero comic books. These are one-of-a-kind items made from images cut directly from comic books, not photocopies, so each one is unique. There you go. And... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I did. just completed my voting. I completed my voting over at cbcawards.org. I plugged in indie comics and reviews as my best reviewer. Uh, I got a number of friends in that category, but uh, I got to go with indie comics and reviews. If you've not got your votes in, guys, Saturday is the deadline. So get over there, support Lorenzo. Let's let's get him on the big stage. He's got big competition, but let's do what we can to support him. Man. If if not, you know, just vote your heart and it's all good. I, I you know, I forgive everyone. It, it's it's all good. You know, it's, it's not it's not, you know, the most deserving folks will win. But I appreciate the sentiment, my son. I appreciate it. So yes, the important thing is to vote. I, I will vote tomorrow. Not tomorrow, but yeah, back in. I've got surgery tomorrow, so I've, maybe uh maybe Friday I'll definitely be voting. Uh, but uh, I, I I haven't not voted yet, so it's on my agenda and it will happen. And we got Beckerman in the chat. I got. It sounds like I got a full day of Beckerman ahead of me on Saturday, so I'm looking forward to that. We're gonna meet up for some coffee in the morning before we go to a garage con. You guys planning a thing? Night we've got local wrestling. I got. My, I get to be with my man all day Saturday. I can't wait. Can't wait. Hopefully yeah. he's nice to me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sure he will. You know, he's 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 a good dude. Oh uh, wow! I wouldn't be. Don't don't don't. don't, don't, don't What's up, Peter Regatta in the house? What's up, homie? Good to see you. We got Sleepy Reader six six six. My guy Damien, another guy that I just voted for for Lifetime Achievement Award over at CBCAwards.org. So get over there, and if if you don't have a different vote for Lifetime Achievement Awards, go ahead and throw it Damien's way, man. He's well deserving. He's been uh, a staple of comic book YouTube for a number of years, and just a great channel, a deep thought channel. Uh, and you should definitely give him a look if you're not already plugged in. We also got 80s guy who has a great uh, channel of of watching uh, New York scenes and sites. I, I really like how he uh, tells you what trains running by, which I thought that was really cool on his channel. We got Larry Love in the house. What's up, homie? Nowhere bound. And uh, I think that's every. Oh, and the lovely Miss Janet, of course. Yeah. Oh, of course. I've got so many. I can really keep up with them. Oh my God. There's uh, there's D'Artagnan. Hey, D'Artagnan. How are you, sir? James Lane, we say James Lane. If I if you didn't, <laughs> my man's doing his wardrobe change here. It was wardrobe malfunction. There's '80s guy, and Peter, man, love you, Peter. Thank you for stopping by and thank you for staying that. Uh, Jose, man, all so many good <laughs> folks out there. What's uh -oh. up, sleepy reader? 
Make sure you vote for my brother, Sleepy Reader, for Lifetime Achievement Awards. It's a pimp named Slaughter here coming to let you know that this is the last week to vote for the CBC Awards. And it's also oh important that you get over there and support these great content creators so that we can grow this comic book YouTube thing that we've been doing and grow this beautiful comic book hobby that we love so much. So make sure, get over there, support your favorite creators, and then be ready for the big show on December 2nd and maybe you get a chance to see the beautiful a pimp named Slaughter. <laughs> well, how can I follow that? That's awesome. <laughs> that's, that's great. <laughs> we look forward to seeing a pimp named Slaughter at the uh, at the awards, hopefully as well, uh, among other things. Uh, that's that's something we can see in uh, on on the show. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a the hair. Yeah. You know, the pimp is very busy. He has a lot going on. He has many, many ladies that he must attend to, but we will try to make an appearance on December 2nd. I can't make no promises, though. I'm hey, busy. Hey, hey. We can only hope. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good, my friend. <laughs> just call. We should be Becker as a hit just to, Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, I, I got, I got a, hey, hey, hey. I got a someone's missing a wig somewhere. Is all I got to say. I don't know, but I don't know where I don't know where you got it from. But somebody somewhere is bald. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Come on, Becker in the worst voice. Come on. I thought it was pretty somebody good. Said was... on Instagram, I think somebody said on YouTube that it, they got um, the ladies' man from SNL vibes, Tim Meadows' ladies' man, and uh, that's what. I, mean. I, yes, I do. Just, I think there's a little bit of. Some... A little bit of I that, maybe. There, yeah. A little bit of Huggy Bear in there, maybe. You know, some uh, some others that we have seen <laughs> over, over time. <laughs> definitely so, some, definitely some Cat Williams. The oh, sleep, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Cat Williams. These people come from the mountains of Caucasus. These Caucasian people come from the <laughs> from those areas. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know what's up. Yes, you know what's yes. up. That was one of the greatest. <laughs> That's one of oh the my God. Jeremy Bruder. I was a huge fan of the of the comic strip before it became a cartoon. Uh, mm. If you go back into some of those old message boards, you'll see all of my logos were. It was always a Boondocks logo. Well before oh. um, it became a cartoon. Just great cartoon strip. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a funny thing about him too. Uh, Aaron Magruder, he's a great artist, and he does animation, and he does live action, all that stuff. Has no interest at all in comic books. That's a very uh, interesting thing about him. He's he's not a a static, you know, anim, uh, static image kind of guy. You know, he, he likes animation and, and creating stuff like that. So, uh, hey, right on. You know, yeah. He has <laughs> The strip has yeah, been I, dead for a real. He, he he started with the strip. The strip was just basically a launching pad to um to the to the cartoon or you know to the the animated show. I so, love yeah. that strip. Bro. The strip oh, is where God. I fell in love with them. Though, yes. Long before the cartoon. I even like Black Jesus. I mean, that was a, that ran for a couple of seasons. Uh, Charlie Murphy passed away, I think, after the second season. It, it kind of like you know it, it wasn't as good for that that third season. But yeah, that was that's been a pretty yeah, that's his production too. His, from his production house, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, man. Charlie Murphy. <laughs> Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. How you doing, Charlie Murphy? <laughs> Critical Entertainment. Hey, we'll be talking about you later. Thank you for stopping by. Um, that's what I see out there. It's, uh, it's a lot of folks out there, man. It's uh, everything's uh, everything's everything. Somebody has Snickerdoodles. Critical Who's that? Inter- James, James Lang. Yeah, he has Snickerdoodles. You know, Phil sometimes has Critical hot chocolate, but. Yeah, yeah, I've got some uh, some work from them. Yeah, they got uh, they got some stuff coming That's a out. New one. We'll talking about that. Yeah, That's yeah, a this new is a one. This, this is an imprint. Yes, absolutely. And we, we shout out Trev, Trev, Trev. Hey, how you doing, my friend? Trev, the shipping guru. Great show today, Trev. Always love hanging out. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say he was doing a bagging and boarding stream today, just chilling. You know, it's always a good time. Check oh, out okay. Trev if you got uh, already plugged in. Absolutely. Oh, Larry Love, thank you so much, my friend. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I'm always phobic about the dentist anyway. When it's an oral surgery, it's even worse. So it's my my my, my greatest nightmare come to life. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be, pray for me, y'all. <laughs> I skipped my last dentist appointment, so I probably should schedule that before the end of the year. You just, Dude, I, mean, I probably could do that. If y'all can, I mean, 
if, if money is not an object, get your dent. I mean, bite the bullet and, and get that dentist work, dental work done, man. Because if you don't, in the end, you pay for it. In the end, <laughs> we don't like to get it in the end, now do we? <laughs> so that's what I'm getting at, uh, as far as this this major this major surgery. But hopefully, after that, it'll be okay, and we will we'll have to talk about uh, oral surgery anymore. So. On the other hand, I did pick up a gang of books. Not a gang, actually, but um, several. Several. Um, Peace Momoko. Thank you for coming visions. <laughs> Yes. Uh, this is the, um, the continuation, or this is another one-shot on in, in the, the Star Wars Visions uh, title. That the last one was very good by the other gentleman who uh, did, um, uh, guess, uh, Samurai, uh, what do you call it, Samurai? I forget his name, too. <laughs> These things just blend together with me, I tell you. It's, just, it's, just, it's, just, it's no fun getting old, losing your memory from time to time. Detective Comics, man, I, I think they're going, like, bi-weekly now. I'm going to have to drop them. Because I, I, I went by, and it's like, wait, two of them? There should be two of them waiting for me. So I got uh, one, uh, 1076 and 1077. I just, I just don't want to buy it. Is, it is a great Here's book, man. Killing it. But it's not going to get better with him doing it twice a month. You know, I mean, I, I was, I'll hang with it for a while. But I, I hope it doesn't continue like that because that's just a blatant money grab to me. I mean, you know, Spidey yeah, was doing it three my, times My budget month. can't. My oh, budget man. requires once a month. Definitely. Yeah, man, five dollars each too. Come on, man, that's that's ten dollars a piece, ten dollars a, a book per month. You know, we're not, we're not made of money, DC. Don't don't go all Marvel on us. Sandman, Wesley Dodds, the Sandman. That is number two. This got some love from some folks out there, but it needs to get more because this is an excellent book. I love this character. I love the team that's on this now. And I can't wait to read this. This is, this is, this is something. This is uh, the Golden Age Sandman. Also from Image, Fish Flies, number three. Uh, last one that was kind of a, a big deal with the misprints and all that stuff. But it's been a good book so far as well. Geiger. I've been collecting that one. I have not read it yet. I need to read it. Yeah, it's a pretty quick read too. So you, you'll be able to catch up in, in a hurry. Hearing good things about this one, Geiger. Oh, Ground Zero, a two-issue series. Two-issue series at three ninety-nine a piece. Thank you very much. Um, anything Geiger, I'm all in. Uh, you know, Junkyard Joe, any of that stuff. I love, love, love that concept of Geiger. That's going to be fun, too. Big Game. The cockeye hits the fan here, I guess, because this was a giant-sized issue, number five of five. Either everybody dies, or everybody comes back to life. Your call. Not quite sure which. One of the two. Something's bound to happen. Uh, Animal Pound. We were talking about this last week. A, a new title from Tom King. This is an ash can, so it's totally, it's kind of thin. It's two ninety nine. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's not the real be... number one, right? No, no. It's uh, it's like kind of like. Um, the way um, Rare Flavors came out with that ash can uh, before the number one. I kind of like the ash can concept. You know, the way you can kind of sample it for a little bit lesser price and see if you want to get the number one. Faceless and the family. Okay. <laughs> this is Matt Lisniewski. This is the only reason I bought this. I love his art. He's got this really trippy looking, uh, it's like a $7.99 book. It's, yeah, $7.99 book, but it's thick. And this guy's artwork is really trippy. He's, he's got this 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 line work that's, uh, well, you can kind of see how the cover is. So the interior is black and white, but he's done some other things too. Uh, he did a thing for uh, a Dark Horse. I can't remember the name of it right now. It was something flower. It's about this Russian girl. Uh, that was good. So if I can find his work, I'll pick it up. Rumpus Room number three of five. This is a uh, this is the rich guy turning people into face cream. Hey, we, we, we should all be so fortunate to be made into a, a product for a rich person at some point. You know, that's, you know, I love <laughs> Mark just, Russell. I think 
Mark Russell is one of my favorite writers, actually. He wrote Not All Robots, which is a really, really good book that yep. talks about a lot of issues that uh, I think are coming to fruition. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't too far off on this whole, you know, face cream thing. <laughs> you know? And here's last week's <laughs> penultimate book, uh, The Ministry of Compliance, which got a thumbs up from uh, Frank at the Danger Room. Or at Danger Room. It's not The Danger Room. So, uh Shout out Frank if you're if you're out there. So we'll see if it's uh, good. This is kind of a thick book too. It's uh, it's a six dollar book, but it looks good as we saw from the art last week. And uh, so far, seems like it might be good. And the last thing is I think this may have been out last week, or maybe just came out this week. Giant size book from Floating World Comics, Monster Fan Club. This is another shaky cane joint. Uh, this this is a a ten dollar joint as well, but it's, it's it's a big book that may or may not fit inside of a um, a magazine box or a bag, I should say. This is the centerfold. This is the back. So it's a uh, it's got some it's got that shaky cane goodness. If you love some shaky cane, uh, Damien, if you're out there, I, I know you do. Uh, so it's a lot of a <laughs> lot of good stuff. A lot, a lot of good stuff in here for us indie fiends who love us some stuff like that so yeah that's uh that's it man that's that's the stuff that i picked up so yeah nice i like it good haul good haul good haul indeed and you know i got a lot of stuff to review too so um hope y'all uh got some tea and crumpets and stuff to enjoy while i go through my reviews because it's gonna be a it's gonna be a few minutes uh, i got uh bike three mainstream things and a couple of things I just wanted to talk about um, as far as I did do a review of them but who was reading it have you read Transformers 1 yet have you picked it up from your shop Marcus I have picked it up but I have not read it yet I was trying I like to read at least three at a time so I have okay. but I've heard hear great things about it and I oh, love Daniel man. Warren Johnson oh yeah 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 I mean that's uh, I'm not much of a fan of of the Transformers but the way DWJ is doing them, man, uh, this was the pick of the week on League of Comic Geeks. And I can see why. Uh, Daniel Warren Johnson is making it clear that these are not your father's Transformers. Uh, the Autobots mm -hmm. are much more, it seems, open to being human and uh, kind of like relate to the, the, the species that, of this planet that they find themselves on. And the Decepticons are just cold-blooded killers. <laughs> they, are, they are just not to be messed with. So, man, uh, yeah, Peter, this, me too. I mean, I, I, um, I'm, I'm surprised how much I like them. And I think it, it took someone like uh, DWJ to get this, you know, to get this um, to people who are not really big and oh, oh, the giant robot stuff. Oh, you know, whatever. I wish there's nothing wrong with that, but. You know, it, I think it transcends just the giant robot thing with the way he's writing it and drawing it. So this is pretty damn awesome the way he's doing it. So, man, if you're not reading Transformers, you need to check that out. And Count Dante, we were talking about this later on, too. Oh, man, this is this is such a good issue of uh, Count Dante. Uh, there's an incident involving a toilet and a jail cell that I won't say anything else about. But, man, this book is... Uh, <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, uh, I don't think I like that. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, so those two off the top of my head. But coming up are the, the main, uh, stuff that I'm going to review, including at least one, um, uh, book that was sent to me in the artist alley. And uh, one of them is uh, from Critical Entertainment, which I have several of them that uh, I will be talking about in this in this uh, in this broadcast. So uh, let's uh, let the cartoons begin, as they say. All right, first one. We talked about this a while back. This may have been a penultimate book as well. Drive Like Hell. This is from yep. Rich Duick and Alex Cormack. Uh, it is on Dark Horse. Yeah. Um, this here, man. Um,
Did we lose you? I can't hear you. We, I can't hear you. I don't, the stream can't hear you either. Let's go back to the main stream. The main screen, not the main stream. All right. Now I hear can't you. hear. Really? I hear you again. I couldn't ah, hear you before. Okay. Well, that's weird. Oh, I think I know what I did. Okay. <laughs> nope. Can't hear you. Hello, my name is Lorenzo, and this Drive Like Hell was a really good book. I really enjoyed the dialogue and the art, and um, they drove like hell, coincidentally, which is the name of the book. Um, All right, how about now? Oh, there you are. Hi. Okay. All right. There's some kind of <laughs> there's some kind of a freakish <laughs> flaw in the uh, yeah. there's some kind I'm of a freakish flaw in the um, <laughs> the thing. So anyway, I'll just tell you about the book, and you have to take my word for it how it looks. All right. So. There's this kid who steals this car, and it's a muscle car, all right? It's a Trans Am from the 1980s Trans Am. Uh, if anybody knows muscle cars, you know, those were one of the biggest, one of the biggest muscle cars that was popular back then. People used to buy bras for the car. What the hell is a bra anyway for a car? What's that about? You know what I mean? Anyway, I digress. But anyway, it goes on the front. I, don't, it, I know, but I mean. from Brugs and stuff, right? Do you really need a bra on your car? I, I mean, it's 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 just it, 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 it tell you that, but it's it's a way to sell you a thousand dollar you know accessory for your car because you you know you don't really need it. But anyway, I, I digress. Are bra still a thing? Are they if, still if you, a thing? I don't recall a bra in a long time. That's because it was the nineteen eighties. <laughs> that should happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but but anyway, uh, he steals this 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 Trans Am. This Trans Am is owned by this really diabolical dude who may or may not be the devil. Uh, so he plots to, him and his girlfriend plot to pull this heist in said car and shit just goes south right from the start. His girlfriend gets shot in the face. You know, she's dead. She's next to him while he's driving. Uh, but then she starts talking and she comes to life. So the guy who owned the car is very pissed off, needless to say, about his uh his car being stolen so he's doing some shit to the car to, to make it uh you know to, to to make it uh i guess bite back at him so what we're going to be looking at here in this book is what's going to happen to this dude with this car i mean it's, it's totally like it kind of reminds you of the you know the blues brothers uh smoking and the bandit any chase movie you've ever you've ever you've ever read and in the back richard duick talks about his love in the back matter of these kind of movies and that's what this book is based on now this was a penultimate book a few weeks ago uh not all penultimate books as we know are always uh always pan out but this one i think I, i'd be willing to give a, another chance um wish i could show the the interiors there's some really good interiors but i'm not sure if all <laughs> <laughs> What's happening with with my sound on this thing? So uh, I just updated this damn program too. So yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway, drive like hell. Gets a passing grade for number one. Um, got a lot of good. I can just show you the, the some of the interiors here. This is where he steals the car from the guy and all that stuff. But I think this is something that uh, you can't you can't really uh, miss a lot. I mean, you can't really. Uh, uh, go wrong because if you like action someone said a couple of weeks ago that there's a book like this every year probably so <laughs> if you like books like this then you're glad that there is a book like this every year so drive like hell get the thumbs up all right so let's see if we can get the next one in it sounds, it sounds <laughs> interesting uh real quick on car brawls first in, in, invented in the 1960s they were initially made to mask porsche club cars from minor scratches and damage from road debris inclement weather and more so it's meant to protect your paint job on the front there i didn't know that well well, well, well thank you for explaining car brawls to me I, I had no idea i thought it was just uh <laughs> i thought people just had too much money to spend and bought unnecessary shit for their car but hey what do i know you know i drive probably a minivan that. i think it's probably that too. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's like, you know what? I got some money to set on fire. I think I should get a bra for my car. Yes, that's it. I'll do just that. <laughs> yes. All right. <laughs> I don't like bras in any way. I don't like bras on anything or anyone. No bras. Oh, yes. I know. And I know I was about to say bras, unless you're a very heavily endowed woman, you know, you want to keep them, keep the girls Special in place while, while you're walking and Special. that kind of thing. <laughs> but most women don't even need a bra. Let them be free. That's right. That's right. You know, unless you're playing sports and you put a sports bra on and it keeps them in place, you know, but the, the whole bra thing is a, a male construct. But all right. No talking about bras. It's very <laughs> distracting. It's very, very distracting. distracting when they don't wear a bra. I'm a <laughs> oh, God. Oh, he's making wear a burka. <laughs> you won't be distracted. All right. <laughs> oh, I, I love I love what Jose is saying here. Rumpus Room is a metaphor. Like we're all merchandise for the riches. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the corporations, we are all merchandise who sell our workforce, so we are facial cream or whatever. And we're just fuel for the fire of, of corporatism and capitalism. That is very deep, Jose. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, James agrees with you, so yes. Surprisingly, I didn't know about bras. <laughs> it depends. Because <laughs> your, your women don't wear bras, right? <laughs> As they, out on the whole stroll. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we're going to try it again with another review with uh, this one. The second one is from Image, and it's called Petrol Head. I hope I can play the sound, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the video from this. So, be bear with me. All right, if you don't hear me, let me know. All right, here we go. Petrol Head. It looks like this. All right, I'm speaking now. Does anyone hear me? All right. I can hear you. Can't hear me. Oh my God, that's crazy. Let's I, see. I hear you. I can hear you. Yes, we hear you. Oh, hear you. <laughs> oh my God, you're freaking me out, man. God. <laughs> All right, Petro is, is this reality where uh, robots, uh, droids, you name it, same name, uh, different names for the same type of creature, these non-human um, mechanical entities, they walk among us. And the gas power ones have become obsolete, but they used to run in these races called the petrol, um, yeah, the um, the petrol head 5000. And it was controlled by this place called the pit, which is the center of the city. And the pit is run by the big O or the O, I like to call them the big O. And the O is just like the the, the the head of the, the city and controls all media, controls everything. Even these races are fixed because Petro Head is in, is in the race here. This is his last race. And he decided to just uh, grab this this other guy. And this, he's, he's playing a little dirty. You can see right here. He's uh, he's he's pulling the other guy uh, out of the race and, and causing him to crash and everything. But then his boy, whose grave he was visiting earlier, shoots past him. And he gets to win the race, right? Hey, Chief's going to win the race. Uh, my boy Chief's going to win. But hey, the old, the big old decides that, nope, we don't like that. We, we don't want the, because Chief's rating is only like around 29%. So that doesn't fly. We got to have the most popular people win the races. So Chief doesn't win the race and it comes to a, a horrible, tragic end. And Petro Head is, is out of the whole business. Meanwhile, there's these other people, these, these scientists and his little daughter who's developing some stuff for the big O and for his henchman, which is called the Eye. Uh, and the Eye is visiting the scientist and telling him, is this work coming along, you know, swimmingly or is it not? And he starts like freaking his little girl out. And it's like, hey, dude, back off my kid, you know. <laughs> and the Eye doesn't like that shit. So it won't be long before the scientist and his kid is going to have to hit the road. And that's when they're going to run into Petrol Head at some point. And uh, Petro Head lives in this area called, um, uh, it's, uh, it's like the, the Smogverse or something like that, I forget what it's called. But the, the main city is like the Ozone and the Smogverse is where all the Petro Heads and all the poor folks live. So eventually they're going to meet up with the scientists, I'm thinking. You know, they don't show it in, the, in this book here, but I, I feel like that's where it's going. But the thing I love most about this book is the art of Pi Parr, who was, I wasn't even up on this person's art before. Pi Parr's art is just, is, and he does everything. 
he does everything. I mean, he inks, writes, uh, sorry, inks, um, colors, he even letters. So he does everything in this book except write the book. Uh, so this, this is a, a most, I just, when I opened it up to look at it, that made me buy it. And this was one of the books that I just like, oh, this is a, a pleasant That's surprise. That's the way to get you. That's how they get you. But you gotta do, once you get in there, you got to deliver to some degree. So it didn't suck at all. Well, I mean, so, you uh, specifically. Oh, yes. 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 <laughs> me. Yes. I'm a very visual person. Yes. And um, yeah, I uh, loud and clear. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, hey, Juno. Good to see you. So, so yeah, what, what I was, up, hooked on you? Yeah, he snuck in here on us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely looking at uh, number two of this one for sure to see where it's going. And Petro Head, the character seems like a sympathetic uh, kind of a character, and I, I feel like this is one of those situations where the old guard is being driven out by the new, and of course, the evil corporatists, the the I and the and the old, uh, they're just. Uh, you know, they're just the evil, the evil ones in the city. <laughs> Peter's digging it too. So, Petro Head is something I definitely will be looking at uh, for number two. So, man, I'm gonna jump into this, man. This is this is a great looking book. Great looking book. This is the ozone. Yeah, the ozone. So, Petro Head is number two, and the third one for. To a nice review, it's going to be called Knights. If I can dig that one up from uh, from the old uh, stack that I got here, Knights. And this is the one uh, we were talking about this a few couple of weeks ago too. It wasn't a penultimate book, but it was on the list yeah. of uh, of books. Wyatt Kennedy and Luigi Formasano. Uh, this is another Image joint. Image just, of course, just rocking it as they always do, because Image is the bomb. Uh, so Knights. All right. Uh, one more time with the, <laughs> you know, if, I'm, if I'm not coming through, Knights is this kid. Uh, this is takes yeah, place in a re, in a reality where vampires, supernatural beings, ghosts walk around and eh, no big deal. If they're on the bus, on the train, vampires are more rare, but they are they do exist in this reality. And this kid has lost his parents, and he's come to live with his friends and his cousins in San Francisco, which is, um, I'm sorry, not San Francisco, it's uh, Florida. Florida is like super weird. It's, it's, there's like earthquakes and all kinds of weird stuff in Florida. And, uh, and he doesn't know yet that his roommate is a vampire. And this is her. She's flying. She's actually a delivery driver, a delivery piece of delivery driver, because I guess... I couldn't find any better work as a vampire than a pizza delivery driver, but she's very bad at it. <laughs> and then she's pissed off when her, her, she delivers a pizza to a guy and he doesn't want to pay for it because it's all jacked up. But uh, he doesn't know yet that that's his roommate and she sees him in the street and she is like floats in and, hey, how's it going? And she he just belts her with a skateboard because like, what the hell? Where'd she come from? But being a vampire, she can just shake it off and, you know, she's fine, you know. So they go to Blockbuster. So this must be like uh, <laughs> so a of a blockbuster oh, didn't go belly up. <laughs> I know. Oh. Sky, Sky Point blockbuster. So <laughs> she goes in and she loves to terrorize the, the employee at blockbuster. And she likes to just steal stuff willy-nilly because just because she can. You know, she's just one of those. She, she's kind of a sociopath and <laughs> and uh, I'm going to say ne'er-do-well, but she's lovable and she's cute. So, of course, the kid falls in love with her. You know, I mean, how could you not fall in love with a hot vampire, right? So, I this mean, book's... I'm ready. I, I know you're ready. <laughs> and he has another cousin. This cousin is the kid right here, you see, who's trying to change his look. And he, he really, he, he, he seems like a nice kid. He's trying to change his, his life, actually. His look is fine. He looks like the nicest kid in the world. But he kills people for a living. And a lot of people don't know that. And there's some scenes in here that will, will catch you off guard. Because it's a very long book that covers several years in the lives of the characters. It moves five years ahead about midway through. Uh, and the, the kid is trying to change, the, his kid who kills people, his cousin who kills people, is trying to change his life and just leave all that behind. But he just can't. You know, sometimes you just can't get out of a bad situation. You know, if you're just stuck in it and you just... You know, you've been 
doing this for years. That's the only life you know. So he's trying to dress up. He looks like a youth pastor. He goes for a job interview, but he's got all these bad voices in his head. And he's probably schizophrenic or who knows in this world, maybe possessed by something. And there's something also about the cute vampire that we don't know yet. There's something about her that uh, they think could be world shattering. And this is an ongoing series. So this is not something that is, uh, I usually, I love my, my limited series, right? But this is going to be, <clears throat> this is for the long haul. You know, they're, they're making this a uh, permanent thing. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, I did not I get like this it. book, but I want it. Yeah, I, I think it. you should definitely pick it up. It's, um, there's some copies still out there. Number two may have come out last week. I know it's coming out, if uh, not this week, last week. So, I think it's worth a look for sure. All right. Is that three? Yeah, there is three, right? Okay. <laughs> three books. <laughs> this is Petrol here at Nights. And the first one, which... Uh, Drive I'm Like Hell. Right now. Yes. Drive Like Hell. It had no sound to it, damn it. Whatever the hell happened to that? So, <laughs> and... Speaking of... Critical Entertainment, they sent me some stuff. I haven't had a chance to go through all the stuff yet. But... I looked at one of them, which I think may have come out this week, called uh, The Cowboy with Many Hats. And they sent me, uh, it looks like a variant cover of The Cowboy with Many Hats. And, uh, yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, it looks very cool. And the artwork is nice. I, I didn't get a chance to make a, um, a slideshow of it or anything. <clears throat> and it's a short story. Page. Yes. And I love the, um, the artwork is very nice in here. You can see this is basically a a cowboy who I don't know he, he's a big a big deal in town. Uh, he has a big shootout with this one guy in the beginning, and then some other marshal, so U.S. marshal frames him, a cricket marshal back in the day, I guess, frames him for murder, and he has to go work in construction. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny because I'm not sure what year um, construction hats were invented. But he's wearing <laughs> like one of those those yellow construction hats. So, okay, maybe they had those in you know somewhere in the old west. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I couldn't swear up and down that these not, did not exist. But it's interesting that he had a, a a yellow construction hat, and he has to go work in the mines. And it's humbling work, uh, and he just does it, you know. And uh, then he comes back to his his town, and there's an episode where he he yes he, he's a great shot. He just like everybody shoots, uh, he hits. So he's He's quite a he's quite a great shot. And I guess the moral of the story is uh, enjoy stuff while it lasts, and it's uh, yeah, it's uh, that's pretty much it. So it's, it's it, the art is awesome. The story I think could have used a little more a little more development um, to where it's, it's to leading up to the the shootout because we don't know what leads up to the shootout. It begins with the shootout, and and in the, in the beginning he seems like he's kind of. Uh, I wouldn't say an ass, but he's just, you know, kind of like, you know, taking for granted his life and everything. I think if we had more, I get what you're doing, trying to make it a short book and make it more affordable and more accessible and, and easy to read, which I love that because I was able to read it in no time. Uh, but I don't know. It's just, um, I just think that the writing could have been a little bit better on this one. But uh, love the art. I you know, love the concept of the cowboy with many hats. And there was a series on this, you know. Bring it on! I'd like to see more of them. You know, I'd like to see more about the cowboy. So it's just a, so far. It's just a one-off then, so far. I believe so. Uh, this one is dated actually from a few years ago, so it may be one of those instances where you uh, like uh, 2013. I want to say, so maybe they updated it. Oh, 2014. Okay, so maybe this new book is a uh, this same book with a with another cover, or it's a completely different story. But uh, this particular one that they sent me is from uh, from a few years ago. But that's the same name. So it should be, if you check under the stuff that came out today, I think you'll find this also in there. And there's also some more stuff we're talking about what later up? on from them, too. I got some more books that they sent me. I have not had a chance to read those yet, so I'll be reviewing those, too. So uh, critical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I appreciate you sending me this stuff. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a great-looking book. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's... You know, just have to be have to be honest. Hey, Willie, 
Willie, what's up, my friend? My friend, we love you, Willie. How are you? Good to see you here. And what I've been, I'm going to leave a link down, but I didn't put it down there yet, but I'm going to leave a link down below once this is, the, the uh, stream is over. As I don't know how to do that uh, beforehand because I'm not that, <laughs> I'm not that technical. I meant to do it before, but I'm going to do it to both Critical Entertainment's uh, site and also to the other person who I'm reviewing today. I said I was going to do standalone reviews for all the uh, stuff that people sent me. Turns out I'm going to not be able to do that all the time. <laughs> so it's going to be doing reviews of them on the live stream with the rest of the stuff that people have sent me and with the mainstream books as well. But I would devote time to them. And the one that I'm looking at is Micro Wars from Stephen Hicks. Stephen Hicks has got this, this series going on where he's collaborating with a couple other different writers. And uh, that would be Stephen Hicks, creator and writer. Malcolm Smiley Cannon, co-writer, Kevin L. Malone, concept artist, and Kuda Makakano. Makakano, I think it's an open and mess it up, is the artist on this on this book. And they do a lot of I mean even like give you like a little tutorial on like how to read a comic book if you don't if you don't know. I guess I, we take that for granted, you know, because we all know. But some folks who have never touched a comic book might want to say, whoa, whoa, what do I do? Which way do I go? And they even give you, you know, they, they break it down for you. You know, it's idiot proof. And they talk about the characters that they, they're going to be showing uh, in the book. Uh, it's basically about this girl named Rashida Folly. Well, I've got, a, I've, got a, a, I've got some video for it. So let's just check out the video for Micro Wars. And this kid is a high school student who's also a superhero. So she also has all the stuff that kids go through. You know, she is got class and she works for the school newspaper and all this stuff but she is also a vigilante i don't know how she got her powers but maybe they'll explain that later on in the story but she, every issue there's a new either villain or a um a hero that joins her in this pursuit in dd city is where it's called <clears throat> so this is a, a really nicely drawn book and i get the feeling that the artists and the writers may be um, a bit younger. Uh, I want to say, you know, younger than me for sure. But, but 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 on the younger side, I would say I don't know for sure. I, I couldn't. I I um, uh, as uh, as as Herman Cain would say. I don't have facts to back this up. But this is my. It's just my intuition that I think this is what's happening with, with them. And in which case, man, this is awesome. I mean, if I was making this kind of content when I was younger, then holy shit, you know, you, you guys are you guys are doing it. But the art is good, uh, the presentation really cool. is good. Like it does. It look, looks really good, and the covers are just banging, you know. But I do have some critiques as well. Um, there are some instances where um, there are, I would say misspellings and grammatical errors and, and i would recommend uh you guys were to do uh, you got yeah i mean you got you got a staff i mean i would love to have you know a team of collaborators you know to, <laughs> to help me do my stuff but you got like two writers and an artist and uh and a concept artist you guys need to find someone who's an editor Someone who knows English really good and uh, is willing to, you know, ready to take this journey with you and help you out with this project because you know, you, man, you guys are close. You guys are close, and there's some other instances where, uh, which book is this? I think it maybe, you know how, um, what's the guy that, that does X Men? Uh, and he's like very wordy. I know Tom King is a very kind of wordy guy, but uh, not Claremont. Right? No, not Claremont. Uh, the you know, Hickman, Jonathan Hickman. You know, Jonathan Hickman oh, would yeah. sometimes just do a full page of just text, you know, <laughs> where he just like talks about stuff. Yeah, yeah. And there's this whole this whole thing about text, uh, which is fine, I guess, you know, if you were to explain like a lot of stuff. You Not know. in the comic book, dude. If I wanted a page of text, I'd read a book. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit loath to, um, to, uh, um, <laughs> you know to uh put text in a comic book myself but these guys they put it in there and this is you can see on on this side here it's just like you know 
this could have been illustrated. I mean, yeah, that's not too bad. It's not. It's not too bad. But this, these two panels. I mean, just like maybe two panels worth of worth of illustration, and I see what you're doing. I, I mean, I, I think I see what you're doing. I mean, you want to move the story along, and they're, they're pretty short books, and you just want to bang them out and get to the next one. But you know, uh, illustrate that. I mean, there's a there's no reason why that couldn't be. These few sentences could have been could have been illustrated in um in panels with illustration in them rather than with a, a text. And I think they would appreciate that. The reader would appreciate that more. So, except for those, yeah, you know, minor critiques, man. Micro Wars from Stephen Hicks and the gang, um, and this at uh, m m w s studios dot com. So, check them out. Uh, I'll leave a link as soon as I possibly can down below. Uh, after I put in the uh, in the in, in the in the tags and all that stuff, I'll put the links down there. So that I th oh yeah, and I want to mention um, Critical Entertainment has got this. They got a list of things coming out here: the Cowboy Mini Hats, Zombie um, Zero, and Life Boat, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, there's other books they've got coming out. I think they sent me a a, a, a copy of Zombie Zero. That's like a graphic novel. It looks it looks pretty dope. I haven't had a chance to read that yet. That, that's a, a, a 250 page graphic novel. So they've been making us, they've been making some stuff. They've been coming up some stuff uh, over there at Critical Entertainment. So uh, their website is, uh, of course, I think criticalentertainment.com. Yes. Uh, yes, Critical Entertainment. Critical Entertainment LA.com. Yeah. Okay. So I'll leave that link yeah, down I there below. It in the chat. You are put awesome. Put the link in the chat for everybody. You are awesome. I don't know what I do without you. I appreciate you. So uh, yeah, that's uh, that's the reviews, and that's a bunch of stuff. So let's go check out next week's stuff here. All right, man. I'm getting hoarse. Been talking so much. I'm not used to talking a lot. Both might say I look like a horse, but that's another story. All right, so. <laughs> Horses look beautiful. Whoa, Wilbur. All right, so that's an old reference. <laughs> Nobody will get. <laughs> Thank I you, sir. It, so Thank I'm you for old. sending me your, your work. You guys are doing great work. <laughs> I know. You're getting up there, son. You, you're kind of catching up with me. <laughs> you got a ways to go. <laughs> I, really, I really am. <laughs> All right, so. Oh, man, tell me about it. All right, so there's some good stuff coming out next week. Uh, you know, uh, what is it, Nightwing? I don't know if you're into Nightwing still. I'm not even going to talk about Spider-Man. Yes, of course. Of course. In Superman. 78. Moving right along. Um, gosh, there's a Wonder Woman. I, 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 met, I read Wonder Woman number one with Tom King, and I liked it. Uh, gosh, I have to get catch up on that, but I uh, have not uh, read one since. Uh, Hulk. Will be out. Let's see what else we got here. I'm missing one. I think I missed five, so I got to catch up on Hulk. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's um, uh, it, it, it kind of slowed down a bit from the first three issues, I think. But I'm 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 hoping and I'm I'm confident that it'll it'll pick up. So, you know, it's, it's good 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 creative team on that as well. Uh, Void Rivals number six has been awesome so far. The Transformer universe. Oh yeah, I forgot yeah. to mention that Transformers um, number two has a has a cool um, cameo in there too. A lot of y'all y'all probably seen it and know who it is, but uh, uh, you, you'll see it when you'll know it when you see it. And this person has a, a series coming out pretty soon too. So I may have said too much already. What am I looking for? I'm looking for the Batman. Off world, yes, that's it. Batman Off World, folks. You know, I pre ordered this, but I'm not real up on what it's about. Uh, Doug Mankey is a great artist, Jason Aaron, who's done a bunch of stuff. Uh, I think he did some of that um, Avengers Forever stuff too, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Jason Aaron? Yeah, so Batman Off World, I mean. Is it a one shot or is it an ongoing? I'm not quite sure. This is a brutal tale. It's got some nice covers. 
Leslie Leroy If I didn't mess that up. This is possibly an this is a character that I should know. It looks kinda of almost like almost like um poison ivy, maybe another world poison ivy or something. Looks like there's three issues of this. Okay. So a three issue series. Off world. Is it off world? Is it also else world? Who is this? This is um Ben Oliver. Ben Oliver Cardstock. Yeah, who needs that shirt and cape and all that jazz? I'll fight your ass bare chested. Man to man. That's a one in twenty five. It's cool. It, Not twenty five. It is. No, but you can probably get it for less, I'll bet you. At uh at mycomicshop.com or a similar website that uh, sometimes has uh, these one for 25s and one for 50s for a lower price. Uh, There's a Pete Woods one for 50. So all these Scotty Young covers are exclusives now, huh? That's the thing. And not only that, uh, this is Scotty's first DC cover. So I may have to go to his site and, and get one of these. I think so. I want to say, I mean, stop really? me if I'm wrong. Stop me if I'm wrong, y'all. I think this is his first DC cover. So I may have to get this. I may have to pay the premium price to get the, that first uh, Scotty Young on DC. First. That, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, he's got, uh, if, I, if I get anything, it'll be one of these, um, it'll be the web store foil, which looks pretty. I can imagine this as a foil. It probably looks dope. I can picture a number of Scotty on covers, but I can't picture a DC one. So you might be right. I think it is. I want to say it is. So, yeah. So that that alone right there, you know, I don't. Uh, I, I like the way you draw that moon in the background. Thirty. Too. That's pretty cool. Wow, this is a thirty dollar book for the foil. No, thank you. Scotty, no, for the regular one. For oh no, oh my God! Well, I, I hate the, to. How much is the foil? I don't know. <laughs> I shudder at the thought of how much the, the foil one would cost. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but uh, I might have to <clears throat> sell some blood or something to get that man. I don't and know. It, it is confirmed first ever cover for DC. So yeah, yes, on site. Yes, I'm right for a change. <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs> this Daredevil black armor. I mean, this apparently has been done before, but I know nothing about it. I mean, some people said it was like a not a good run. Uh, I mean, probably back at the time when I wasn't in uh, when I wasn't in the comics for one of those periods of my life where I was, you know, <laughs> just wandering loose in the world. Yeah, so I don't know if I'll pick that up for sure. However. The Holy Roller, number one. Yeah, looking forward to this one. I like Rick Bender. Holy Roller. I, you know, Remender, if not for Remender, <laughs> I need to talk about this, the previous book. Yeah, yeah, it was the previous book. Um, catch up on Wonder Woman. Catch up on Wonder Woman, too. Oh, my God. I don't even think I see what you did there. Oh, so this is actually... Uh, by Rick Reminder. It's got three writers, is what it says here. Uh, Rick Reminder, uh, Andy Samberg, who I love on TV, and oh, yeah. uh, it's the Joe Lonely Trump. Island guys. That's right. <laughs> it's the I'm on a boat. The guys I'm, on that do boat. The, I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. boat. Yeah. I love I'm on a boat. Yes. In <laughs> your I know that, that one. That was my favorite one. Oh, that was the best one. That one got the least amount of play too. It was a, it was like a a a, a, a dance music theme thing. Oh, that was so excellent. Also, I'm paying by check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one was great. That was my favorite. I know. So, I probably ordered this. If I didn't, I'm going to get it. So it's about this guy. I guess yeah. somehow I'm on this gets one. a. Gets a, a powers to, you know, to, to to use his bowling skills to beat Nazis. And who doesn't want to? Who doesn't want to beat Nazis? I know, right? So <laughs> this is the B cover. She get Nazis. You will all get bowled the fuck over. This is uh, 
the one for 10. Throwing a strike for justice, he says here, from someone named Parson. I like that retro look. It's crazy, man. It's 2023 and, and, and Nazis are still the thing. That's wild. I, oh, what the hell? What the hell? These guys are twofer. You got a Confederate and Nazi. So, <laughs> kick his ass twice. Oh, well, good. I love the, the baseball wind up for this one here. Uh, the one for 20 level yeah, variant. <laughs> yeah, with three riders, man. One of them being Rick Remender. You know, you got that uh, that comedic edge from Andy Sandberg and Joe Troman. I don't know if I'm familiar with his work. He was a. Uh, He's one of the guys involved with the uh, with those with those video shorts too. You say right from SNL. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's in good hands then. That's another good one here. Oh, this is a uh, the one for twenty five Hawthorne variant. Yeah, I always thought that uh, Andy Samberg. People talked a lot about um, who's the other guy um, that. Uh, uh, God, that used to remind me of Andy Samberg. But Andy Samberg was a very talented guy. I loved him on uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine. We still watch that. You know, I didn't. I haven't I finished mean, that I series yet. That. Oh, that's that is. If you just want to like, sometimes like, uh, you just want to watch a real quick, you know, show on Hulu without the commercials. It's like twenty minutes and you're done. And nonstop laughs. Terry Crews and and uh, the, the the lieutenant who was uh, the guy from. Um, uh, What's this? God, I never people's names anymore. But you know, the, the bald-headed brother from from uh, from uh, from Law and Order. It was one of those uh, police procedural shows. He's the lieutenant on there, and oh, it's just hilarious. It's just one of those great shows, man. So yeah, this is something I think we're all uh, a lot of us going to be picking up. Raphael Albuquerque, a one for fifty. This is nice. So yeah, pick this up, Holy Roller. You got Juju Eyeballs, you got Holy Roller, and all that jazz. All right, uh, the, pl the plot holes. The plot holes, I, I've, man, I, I have not read number three, but the first two were very good. I like that a lot. Uh, Sama, Samna, Sama, Nama, Nama. Samna is another one of those to, to come from uh, the distillery devil's cut uh this is becky clunan and tula lote uh their their little uh story in devil's cut was not called this but it was called something else but uh it was the first appearance of this story and these characters so this is another one of those these books are gonna be expensive i think this one's like eight bucks nine bucks it's um nine dollars eight ninety nine but but much like uh, the one that came out last week, which was, uh, what is that, Gone from Jock, I think it's worth it. I mean, if you give me something like this, you know, for, for nine, ten bucks, I think it's worth it. Uh, got two I think it's still, I think it's funny how they make it 99 instead of just making it a nine, you know? It's, it's all psychological. I guess there's some psychology to that. That's why they do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Luck and fruitly. Well, at least they're not paying $10 for it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what all right i'll do it because i think people are opinion we're, makes we're, a difference oh it, it does i mean especially in our minds you know uh this is the exclusive flip book ash can edition which i guess that means it has another oh maybe it has two covers maybe the other cover is uh the main cover ash can edition and uh, this is tula's variant I think the first one is Becky's. It's cool. You, like, you know, both people can write. Both people can draw. The world is your oyster. I mean, you can just, <laughs> you can just make, let's make shit. Let's go out here and make some good, some good comics, you know. And a lot of these are wrap around. Who else is an artist we might, oh, Joelle Jones. Love Joelle Jones. And she's awesome. This is a wrap around cover too. So, yeah, this is, this is something that y'all should be looking for. And some of you probably already have. Jay Lee, who is always a oh delight my God, to see. My T-fall hit today. I hope you had enough in the account. How much my T-fall bill was uh, today? Two seventy-five. 
173. I was I was only a hundred off. <laughs> I, bought, I bought some hardcover. I bought that uh, nice house on the lake hardcover. I had to buy it. Ooh, ooh, ooh! If I had seen that, I probably would have bought it too. I'm glad I didn't see it. Because <laughs> I probably would have bought that shit. Mine would have been like extra high. I've been getting by with some pretty low my comic shop orders lately. I've been doing like the the uh, the FOC and and ordering less at the end of the month. But it's you know cutting down on multiples on duplicates, I should say. So, uh, but even still, you know the bills have been pretty high. All right, next American Psycho. Um. Luana Vecchio, hey, she's doing the A cover on here. I don't know if you anybody read this first issue. Um, I know mean, you said that um, uh, 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 Robbie liked this one a lot. I believe you said that Robbie liked this one. I saw a lot of, yeah, I saw a lot of people liking this one. Yeah, yeah, this is a <clears throat> Sumerian joint. You know, all hail Sumerian. And there's several other covers. They're gonna, I guess. Um, this is uh, B. Walter. I think they did maybe the A cover on the last issue. And once again, they're doing this. Um, oh, whoa, slow down there. They're doing this um, this bloody business card. The first one totally sold out. Cannot find it. Uh, I think Comic Tom had some for sale on his. On his he somehow wrangled some. He was selling them on his site. I couldn't find this anywhere other than on stupid eBay, eBay prices. I wasn't going to pay that. Uh, but this is going to be a, uh, it's his partner's business card. Going to be do this as a series. I'm going to wait around. I'm going to do the, uh, the JP budget collecting and wait around and see if I can catch that, that, that first number one for in six months for a lesser price. So yeah, this, this is a uh, Sumerian has got this way of, turning movies into good comics and this builds on the movie it doesn't just rehash the movie so it's a it's not just that story it uh picks up uh into a whole new story so might want to jump onto that too jump on it animal pound animal pound oh that's the that's the preview is all never mind here we go the lunar the lunar lodge the Lunar Lodge, uh, this marriage ain't easy, especially when your spouse is hiding monstrous secrets. Just ask Rob Morland, who knows things are not great lately with his wife, Fiona, but is hoping he can fix that until the Lunar Lodge calls to confirm her stay. The Lodge called to confirm her stay? Oh, whatever. <laughs> Rob decides to shallow his wife to the hotel, but what he finds reveals even more horror than he thought. Rob will soon discover that there is much more to the Lunar Lodge and to his wife than meets the eye. So his wife's not only step interesting. It does. I hope I ordered this. Uh, I don't know the creative team, but I will take a chance on uh, that kind of a, a premise right there. And it's a good looking uh, cover too. So his wife is not just sneaking off to the Lunar Lodge for a little. Eh, eh, eh. She's also doing some other crazy shit that we're not even sure about. So uh, this could this could be more than just a. a Oh, and an affair. This could be like a whole bunch of uh, other darkness and stuff. So that's worth a look, y'all. All right. The last Ronin. This is another. What well, this? I don't understand. This is like reissuing the the, uh, the the last Ronin in smaller issues or something like that. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, the Devil That Wears My Face. Still got to read number one. Just picked it up last week from my comic shop, so I haven't read it yet. Number two will be coming out allegedly next week from Mad Cave. Oh, Let It Gasoline. Poor Let It Gasoline. <laughs> Willie. Willie, what are we going to do about Let It Gasoline, man? Oh, my God. Ah, Mortal Terror. This is one I want to take a closer look at. A vampire flipped Dracula in which mortality means life. A vampire flipped Dracula in which mortality means life. Am I reading that wrong or what? And life means death. Vampires, Jonathan Harker, Lucy Westerer, Mina Murray, live in underground London, trying to keep the undead city safe from the rumored mortals. 
above who seek to give them life, but only to kill them. When the authorities refuse to believe mortals, the authorities refuse to believe mortals. Okay, let alone the mysterious, the mysterious Count Dracula, <laughs> are anything more than myth. They are on their own to keep their city eternally dead. You know, once again, I'm not familiar with the creative team, um, but I don't know. We'll see. If it's a slow week, maybe I'll pick up a copy and give it a chance. Other than that, don't know if it might be worth your while. So I can't recommend that because I don't know. Be advised. All right. All right. What else we got? Uh, the Adams Family is coming out with the series. Allegedly from, from, I know. from Scout. I think I know the uh, an ultimate. I think I see it. <laughs> Well, if you do, there's a pretty neat trick, and I'll tell you at the end. <laughs> oh, Darkling. Darkling, uh, Archie from Archie Comics. Archie is leaning into this whole horror genre, you know? Uh, from the outside, Darla Lane looks like a normal college student, but she actually is in, uh, some kind of... She has a mystical artifact, her cape, and she wears a cape all the time. Huh. Okay. Well, anyway, I love Archie is, is doing this horror line. And if I didn't order this, I'll probably pick it up because the horror line is banging. And I've, and I've liked it read, a lot. Have you read it? Is it good? Darkling? No. The just horror good. line. Have you, have you read I have read a couple of them, yes. And they, and they were good. Yes, some of the early ones like uh, Jinx. Jinx uh, from Jinx World, not Jinx World. That's that's a uh, Brian Michael Bendis, but uh, little little not little Jinx either. But there's a character named Jinx, and also um, uh, I've read uh, all of the uh, Afterlife with Archie books that came out last uh, not last uh, year, but a few years ago, and, and and I think that's what really sparked it. I mean, the Afterlife with Archie series kind of put that whole horror uh, Archie thing on the map I think so hey, don't sleep on Archie man they have low print runs loyal fan base could be a thing you never know and they keep putting this haunted house of love story up here like it's going to come out you know I was told that this was not going to come out you know so either somebody's wrong here so I'm just saying alright this little piggy <laughs> All Reggie wants to do is uphold family tradition. He's studied, he's learned every technique, and now it's simply time to put everything into practice. After stapling piggy masks onto their faces, <laughs> always a good idea, Reggie must confront hunting down his longtime crush Abigail and her family. Because <laughs> nothing, nothing says, hey, come get some of this, other than a, a piggy mask stapled to your face. Coming of age is hard, especially when you're a werewolf. So this could be something? I don't know. I don't know. It could, or it could just be a very bad book. Some gnarly. <laughs> but it's like a werewolf who wears pig faces and he's going to courting with a, a pig face stapled to his face. Okay. All right. Sign me up for it. Maybe. Yeah. Definitely, may, definitely, definitely maybe. <laughs> Or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you've, you've, I won't even say it. Oh, Count Dante comes to an end. God bless Count Dante. This looks like the death of Socrates on the cover here, where uh, his, his, his loyal student is holding his body and he's, he's reading his last breath. That's been such a good book, man. Y'all can catch this book. If it comes out in a trade, definitely read Count Dante. Count Dante. The semi-true story of the most dangerous man who ever lived. Yeah, I've been. Which I've one been, did you buy, '80s guy? '80s guy bought three. I was wondering which one. And Janet comes with very good rule. I agree, Janet. <laughs> three or three copies. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know which which which, uh, which ones. Yeah, I wasn't uh, wasn't monitoring the monitoring the chat like I should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't staple things to your face. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's always a always a bad thing to do, dear. Staple stuff to your face. Uh, I, I can't recommend that. 
in the comments and reviews and circumstances, do not recommend statement things to your face. If you do, don't sue us. PSA. <laughs> That's right. CBS cares. All right. Okay, Next one, one is. <laughs> oh, look at this He's one like, here. Um, 80s guy was talking about this one. Which one? The one we were just talking about is what 80s guy was talking about. Oh, okay. Wow. That's awesome. Let us, know what, let us know what you thought of it. All right, the next one is Helicious or Bootylicious, whichever you prefer. Meet Cherry, the devil's prankster granddaughter and the cutest Grim Reaper in hell. She loves everything about her home, its burning landscapes, its horrific inhabitants, and especially her demonic family. But she's lonely. Aw. She might look like a little girl, but she's much too powerful for the imps and the damned inhabitants of the underworld. There's only one soul who Cherry thinks might be a good playmate. Satan worshipping death metal frontman Briggy Brundy. Briggy Bundy. <laughs> That's for you to say. The bad news is he's not dead yet. But Cherry won't let a little thing like that keep him from a, keep them apart. All hell breaks loose when Cherry defies the order of the afterlife to finally have the best friend she's always wanted. You know, what draws me to this is that it's drawn by Kit Wallace, who I love his artwork. Not crazy about stuff that he writes, but someone else is writing in this one. Uh, A.C. Medina, who I'm also not familiar with their work, but I'm willing to take a chance on this. And I may have pre-ordered it. If not, I'll look for it. <laughs> it's from, uh, who's it from? from Massive. So this is the Whatnot brand, which is what mass what uh, Whatnot calls oh. their publishing company. Really, so, I didn't know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the this same one with. Um, interesting. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I mean, and the Kit was he did uh, work for them on Quested, and that was one that were better books. So yeah, I, I would give this a shot because uh, their creative team, and. A little, a little lonely demonic girl just wants to hang out with a metalhead. I mean, who wouldn't love that? It's a, it's a Kit Wallace limited foil, cover B. That's what it says here. And then there's one other. Ah, yeah, that's kind of like the little Alice in Wonderland kind of thing. <laughs> love his style, and it's so colorful. He does his own. Uh, coloring and, and all that stuff too and um, C. Richardson video game homage for cover C and of course me being a square I don't know which like video game you got like me Castlevania. probably I mean hey the H looks like a castle so but then you know I'm known as Mr. Video Game so take my word for it yes yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's Castlevania. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Like I said, I don't, I don't know what I'd do without you. <laughs> your foot in the in the present day and knowing what's going on, your and your um, your uh, finger on the pulse. All right, so next one we're gonna look at is Eden Frost. We just passed that one a minute ago. Uh, this is from Mad Cave, and this is like. I don't know if this takes place in Ukraine. I don't know if it's in the same oh, Ukraine. The same I Ukraine. Was wrong. I thought this was you it. thought this was it? Ah. I thought it was this one. Damn it! Uh, good guess, though. Good guess. You know me very well. Uh, they discover a golem, a golem here, and uh, maybe that helps them out with this fight. I guess Ukraine is once again, you know. Still fighting against uh, the damn it, Russia, no matter in reality or in in fantasy, always trying to take some shit from somebody. Can't get away. Can't get away. And so, Eden Frost from Mad Cave, I may have pre-ordered it already. If not, I'll be worth a look anyway because uh, I don't know the creative team, but it looks good. So there you go, Eden Frost. All right, next. Oh, we were talking about. Um, um, our folks from Critical Entertainment, they have a thing coming up uh, called Life Vote. 
the dark era of space-time, almost before particle decay unwinds the atomic fabric of space-time as we know it, May, Jacob, and Dove carry the faint flickering torch of life through, the endl through an endless void. This short story is about loss, fate, and the hope that we must hold dearly on our journey toward the ultimate unknown. I like that. I like that. I've got a copy here. I'm going to read it. I hope you have it ready to review next week. Um, it's got, it's got that thousand, mi thousand yeah, miles there. The art on this cover is interesting. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah, her, it? Face, her face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she's got the thousand yards there. <laughs> she's going like, yes, I am in space. Yeah, dude. That's creepy. But, yeah. I'm going to fucking have nightmares about this cover. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, and I like that they're doing they're doing short books for a, a lower price. You know, I, you know, I, a lot of us just want to have a short story to read, and, and I'm down with paying a little bit less and have a little bit less to to read. You know, I'm a, as long as it's a good story. So uh, next week, um, this comes out. I already have my copy. Yeah. It's unfortunate that comic books aren't more affordable because it's really a high barrier to entry for kids, which we desperately need kids. Like, I don't know what we're going to do about it, really. That's the thing, man. I mean, I don't know if uh, $3.99 or $4.99 is like 12 cents back when I was a kid, but I doubt it. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's quite like 12 cents, you know, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's some, something's got to give and they're coming out with more every week. So there's that as well. All right. I don't know what comics are going to do when, when us old heads die. I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, my God. Everybody will, will switch to Manker. <laughs> yes. Hey, Terry Floyd, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Oh, hey, buddy, what's up, up Terry? <laughs> oh, buddy, I know, right? I tell you, life still in shoes. Well, I, well I, there was a... It was a very, a very good try on the, on the, the penultimate book, but uh, unfortunately, it was not correct, not through your fault, because that was a good guess, and I'll explain to you why you weren't correct after we show the penultimate book. So here it is. Trust me, here it is. <laughs> One of these days, anytime soon. And it goes like this. The ultimate book. Coming up right now. <laughs> oh, no! Damage report. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can try it again and see if we can do it next time. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, I, thought we were, I thought we were going with a new intro. I, was confused. I know, oh, no. That's when shit goes wrong, man. The, the submarine crash. Oh shit! It's just going left and right. It's going sideways. All right, here we go. It is time for the penultimate book, and I tell you, there's been there's been some crazy stuff going on with the penultimate book here, and if we don't crash, I'll be able to show it to you. Yesterday, when I previewed everything and looked for the penultimate book, this was in next week's previews, and they moved it to the week after's previews, so I wasn't able to to. Uh, uh, so it's kind of unfair. You, you know, I, I know it's, it's not. It's, it's, it's just. Uh, I set you up to fail. Totally set you up to fail. <laughs> you had no way to win there. No way to win. But any hoozle, the penultimate book for next week, which is actually gonna be like for the next couple of weeks, is called Hex Claw Hex Paw. <laughs> and unfortunately, and fortunately, Hex Paw has a trailer on the creator's website, and here it is.
No, it is not November 22nd. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is supposed to be November 22nd, but <laughs> I guess it got moved back. All right. Like, what the hell is he talking about? He lost his damn mind. All right. Colt Brass is Hexpaw. It is. Master Thief and Steve McQueen fanboy. When aroused, he transforms into a savage six foot black cat and robs from the rich and evil, which are very often the same people. Doing the arousing is his mastermind partner in crime, the witch, Miss Blunderbuss. And that's all we got from Blood Moon Comics. This could, be, this could be very interesting, or it could be a train wreck. And sometimes it's, you just got to roll like that. You know, you just got to roll with the penultimate book like that, man. Some, you just got to take a chance. It, it, this looks like, because he's drawing, I don't know if anyone's ever seen the movie, there's been two versions of the Cat People. Uh, there was one made in the 40s, I want to say. There was one made in the 80s with David Bowie, which was, I love that one, with Nastasha Kinski. Uh, and, and the Cat People, these people would can transform into panthers, and and uh, once they when they had sex, uh, when they were when they, yeah when they had sex, they would transform into panthers. And the only way to transform back into a human is to kill. So he's kind of playing on that. Uh, <laughs> on that. What's up, Scotty? What's up? I didn't see you sneak in there, my friend. What's up, son? What's up? Yeah, so, so he's he's kind of <laughs> so he's. He's playing on that, and this could be interesting. And he, I love that he uh, left this this little whimsical trailer on his on his YouTube <laughs> you know, to plug his book. So this could be this could be good. I know, or or yes, or that Jose, yes. <laughs> Maybe it's so bad it becomes great, it becomes you know good again, like like Showgirls, you know, or Plan Nine from Outer Space. You know, it, it crosses that. The needle from bad to good now. It's, it's it's so so bad that it goes back to good again. You know, I like that concept. So, <laughs> Hex Paul moved to next the week after next, not to next week. But uh, I hope it doesn't do a lead of gasoline on us and just disappear altogether. But uh, Hex Paul, there you have it, y'all. This is your penultimate <laughs> book <laughs> of the week, and I'm. Um, I don't know what to tell you. That's all I got. <laughs> that's one more. It's interesting. Man. It does look it's interesting. True. That's that's why I like. Oh, this is. And, and was looking at the stuff. There was a few that came close, and the final book is called The Vein, and The Vein was this close to being that which I had picked it now for the penultimate book because it's still scheduled to come out next week. The Vein is a sprawling body horror adventure comic about a young man named Teddy who's been unwittingly merged with a triple-headed, wormhole-traveling parasite. His new ally has a penchant for violence, feasting on dreams, and show tunes? Will this unusual escapade ease Teddy's existential dread and put him on a purposeful path? Or will this be the oddest demise of any earthling ever? Bonus, a slew of pinups by James Edward Clark, Tim Malloy, Johan Eberg, and many more. That's how you pronounce it with a little umlaut over his A there. Johan Eberg. Eberg. So, yeah, I'm, um, I don't know the creative team, but this concept. Problem is, though, this is an $18 book, y'all. I mean, what? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. What? I don't know. I know does it come with a free lap dance or what? I, mean, I, I don't know what uh, makes it, this an eighteen dollar book. And uh, there's a cover B from R. L. Black, the Kickstarter exclusive variant. So this was probably a Kickstarter. Oh, it better be like oh, 60 pages. Okay, okay, it's sixty pages. All right. So that means it's uh, still you know, dog. It's sixty I know. pages is not eighteen dollars worth of book. Yeah. I mean, I could get uh, trades for like, you know, with 200 pages for like $20. So, yeah. 
but I'm not gonna be able to do that. It, it, looks, <laughs> it, as hell, it does. It does. I mean, this that's the thing. It looks really good. Bryce, uh, yeah, is, uh, yeah, that color is just putting in work on these covers. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, it's it's good looking stuff. It's good looking stuff. If I can scrape together seventeen ninety nine. <laughs> I just have to, you know, not eat that week or something. I don't know. But, and the third cover is uh, Ho Chi Anderson. Oh, okay. I'm familiar with their stuff. Ho Chi Anderson. This, is a, this was apparently was a Kickstarter. It looks like it was a Kickstarter. A lot of these books start on Kickstarter and they get picked up by uh, a publisher or they somehow get it published later on. So, this is one of those that I think got that kind of a start. So, um, you know, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> These yeah. guys. Drop back. Pass. Pass. Hey, these guys had the same category as Paul. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. So, um, I reckon that's all we got uh, for this uh, for this installment of uh, this week in comics from circumstances and myself. So, uh, man, we survived. We, we, we made it through, despite all the <laughs> all the technical difficulties and all that stuff. Oh God, what's the cost of uh, <laughs> one for fifty? Yeah, the one for fifty is like yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is one for 50 prices right there. So I'm thinking they probably don't even do any incentive covers. It looks very, very, very indie. So uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, they're probably publishing on a shoestring. They got a lot of talented creators that, you know, trying to get paid to because, you know, hey, you know, you got a 60-page book full co I hope it's full color. It better be full color for $17, I would think. But, uh, mm -hmm. hey, anyway, you know, maybe maybe. Uh, the rich folks among us might might pick one up. <laughs> so that's it. That's it. We're we're done. We're out of here. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. Uh, all I want to stop by and the folks who watch on the replay. I'll get those links up to everybody as soon as the show is over. Uh, and God willing, and the creek don't rise, and you know, and uh, there's no mishaps in my oral surgery. <laughs> we'll be back next week. I might be looking like Marlon Brando. I know, right? I already got one one cheek still kind of swollen from the last one, so uh, we'll see how next week I look like Marlon Brando or not. So we'll we'll, we'll see. Ah, uh, all right. So uh, man, so check out my son circumstances. Check out my other. Oh, oh, check out my son's circumstances on Instagram with his memes galore, and also on YouTube. And also check out my other son, Scotty Vaughn, who's doing so much stuff, man. He's blown past both of us with his subscriptions and his and all of his work. He's just working so hard. He, I, I hope I hope he wins. He's up for some stuff too uh, on the CBC award. Yes. So vote vote for Scotty out there. Just help this young man win something. He deserves it as well. He deserves it way more than I do. So let's uh, let's get out there and vote. And y'all have a great week. What was this? I think it's half of a. <laughs> I know, man. The <laughs> Greek pastrami sandwiches. <laughs> half of it. <laughs> All right, y'all. Damn good sandwich. I know, right? <laughs> well, New York stuff is expensive, though. You know, stuff ain't cheap. So until next time, we'll see you guys next time. Take care, folks. We love you all. Peace.